Hey guys and welcome to today's video where I'm going to show you how Drogo's tank went from this to this. So a bit of background information before we begin. Drogo is my mossy prehensile tailed gecko also known as a Chihua from New Caledonia and his new tank is the Habstat 60 by 45 by 60 centimeter glass terrarium which arrives flat packed. It was pretty easy to put together, but I do make a small change near the end of the build, so stay tuned so you don't miss that. So the first thing I actually did with this tank is take it apart again. <laughs> Basically I slid out the sides of the tank. The reason being is I really wanted to silicon some bits of cork in place before using expanding foam and that's one of the handy things about this tank is you can easily take it apart when you want to really work on something and then slide it back in. Uh, but once the silicon was fully dried I did add those back in and as you can see this main bit of cork on the left is going to be sort of a main hide and basking area for Drogo. Next I used touch and foam landscape expanding foam. I ended up using two big old tubes of these uh, to create the background. Now prior to adding the foam I did roughly plan out where I was going to put the cork pieces and branches so when it came to it I could quickly add them in as the foam is expanding um, and each side I had to leave for about 24 hours before doing the next. So as you can imagine this took me about three days. Once everything was fully dried, I went round and carved the foam. Now this is something I didn't do in Lyra's tank all those years ago and I really wish I did. It will still work, like you can still add the eco earth on and it will stick, but it will probably come off quite quickly. So this just helps the eco earth stick on a lot better. You can also add a lot more texture and make it look more natural. Uh, for example, as well as carving, I also like to pinch some of the small areas just to create that added texture. Now as you can see at this point the main part of the background is done. I aim to add a lot of cork and branches because it's good to add a lot of climbing opportunities for these geckos. They can climb on the glass but you don't want them to have to rely on that. One problem I did run into that I've never had before is the expanding foam did start coming away at the bottom and I don't know why, I don't know if the glass was a bit dirty before I use the expanding foam. I know sometimes people put silicon sealant on before using expanding foam but I did just go back and add some silicon behind this. Talking of silicon, the next part is my least favorite part of the build, covering the background in silicon and adding eco earth. I did this part in the bathroom because it's a very well ventilated area and most importantly, it's far away from the pets because silicon sealant stinks and you probably shouldn't breathe it in. And this part felt like it took forever because I was kind of procrastinating um, because I hate this section so much, but basically you add on silicon sealant, you add on your eco earth and you kind of have to keep tipping the tank up after like it's all dried and make sure the dirt's off. It's really boring, I hate it, but <laughs> we finally got there in the end. I then went round with a wet and dry hoover and removed any excess dirt. One thing we had to do after this was cut two little areas at the top of the tank so the lid could actually fit back on properly. So keep this in mind if you are using this tank and you are building. Thankfully I didn't put any cork there because that'd be a right pain to move. Now to add equipment. So if you saw my supplies haul, I said there was no room for cables to enter the tank, but I was actually wrong. There are these little things that pop out and you can easily add in any like cables you need. Or in this case, I'm adding in the Haberstadt Dimmingstadt uh, probe since I'm using a deep heat projector with Drogo. Then I installed the Haberstadt humidifier. So the tank actually comes with a spare bung that you can just pop in and out at the top. And this one allows you to fully install the humidifier nozzle into the tank. Now I'd say if you have a smaller species of gecko, like a morning gecko, I think they could, you know, they could probably travel up that nozzle. Uh, but if you're using this with like a Chihua, Crested Gecko, Gargoyle, Lychee, anything like that, you'll be fine. Um, so this easily went in. I also bought a dual outlet adapter for this humidifier uh, so I could use it in Lyra's tank. Now Lyra's tank is an exoterra so it doesn't have this bung so when the humidifier does come on it does escape a little bit. It's not as effective as it is in this tank so I might make some adjustments myself to that but 
The jaw outlet thing was very easy to install and now both geckos can have a little extra humidity. Uh, the humidifier will hold four litres of water but I just added in two litres for the time being. Uh, you can actually set the humidifier to come on every half an hour, hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. I opted for four hours and you can choose how long it comes on for anywhere from two minutes to 120 minutes. Uh, for now I've just done two minutes. You can also choose to manually just turn on the humidifier when you want as well. And you can also adjust how much mist or fog comes out uh, from one to three. But anytime you do use a humidifier, this does not mean you don't have to spray down your tanks. I just want to add that here. Uh, this just adds a little extra humidity, but still remember your geckos need to drink. So spray down that tank. Next, I made that change that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So I noticed once it was all together, there really wasn't that much ventilation other than the lid. However, Haberstadt do make these ventilation panels that you can add to the side, but they don't come with the tank, you have to buy them separately. So I ended up buying a pair and installing them. Now this would be so much easier if I did this at the beginning, um, but you know what, it wasn't too bad. Luckily I didn't put any expanding foam or anything on those glass panels that slid out. However, one design flaw we did find is if you put a bit of pressure on these mesh pieces, they do actually bend. So if you had a strong lizard or snake living in there, they may push through them. However, you can also install these panels towards the back of the tank where I think they'd get more support. Anyway, onto the main part, planting the tank. So first I started with the drainage layer. These are Habstat sinking clay balls. I used to use Zoomed ones back in the day, but the ones they make now are tiny, like ridiculously tiny. I don't know what's happened. So the last few builds I've done, I've been using the Habistat ones. And one bag would actually probably fill this pretty well, like it, it did the trick. But since I had two bags and I'd already opened the second one, I did put another half in. So we have one and a half bags of clay balls in here. Then I added the drainage fleece by Lucky Reptile. Now I wanted to create like a lip so the dirt doesn't just easily fall through to the drainage because that has happened in some of my other arboreal builds, like it just collapses. However, from the outside, I must admit, it does look quite ugly, but we will get over it and I can always cover this piece of glass. Next, I added two bags of Earth Mix by Arcadia. And then I added the plants. So the first one I'm using is a dwarf umbrella tree. Now I must admit the two main plants I've decided to use are new to me. It was very tempting to just use the same old plants I'm used to, but I wanted to try something different. And also I found that there's gonna be about three main plants in here, two are fairly big, and it will make the tank look, I guess, kind of small. Like if I had lots of little small ones, it will look massive. But you have to kind of build for the species you're keeping and in my experience with Drogo one or two large plants will do far more than loads of small ones. So the next plant I'm adding in is a croton. Uh, not to be confused with a crouton. <laughs> um, I've heard this one's a really easy plant to grow and I really love the colourful leaves. Then I added inch plant cuttings that I've been propagating. Now this actual plant started off as five cuttings I brought off eBay for Isla's tank. So this, is, this plant is really old and we now have a house full of pots full of this plant. You literally can't get rid of this plant. Like even when you think you've got some like dead pieces of plant, you throw it in the tank for the cleanup crew to eat, it pops back up. So if you want a really easy trailing plant to grow in a tank, get an inch plant, because trust me, you won't be able to get rid of it. I also added a small coleus, I think that's how you say it, um, into the tank as Drogo's had one of these in the tank before and they grow and flower really well. I'm also propagating pieces of gone pothos to hopefully add into the tank at a later date because once again pothos grow really well. I then gave the tank a good water and added a leaf litter. Now I won't be adding in cleanup crew just yet as there's not enough waste in there and also the tank needs to kind of settle first. The plants are still somewhat vulnerable because they're getting used to their new surroundings and knowing the isopods that live in Drogo's current tank, they would probably try to attack the plants. 
I then put the thermostat and thermometer probes in place. Hopefully eventually if I have pothos to grow in here it will grow around this area where I've kind of like attached them to the branch so you know it will look a little more natural. I then installed the deep heat projector which is in the clamp lamp graphite as well as a Pro T5 7% UVB shade dweller. Uh, we needed a little extra UVB since Haberstadt terrariums use black mesh which can actually block out a lot of vital UVB. So if you do have a Chihua or Crested Gecko and you want to have a Haberstadt tank then maybe aim for a 7% UVB lamp. Throughout this build I also had the 34 watt Jungle Dawn LED bar on top, this helps with plant growth and along with the Pro T5 it can be linked with Lyra's LED bar and UV so all four lights are powered by one plug. And finally, of course, I had to add a coconut hide. I made this myself from a coconut I brought from the shop. Um, Lyra, my crusted gecko, absolutely loves hers and since Drogo's never had one before I thought I should add one to his new tank. And there you have it, the tank is complete. I have left this tank for about a week to settle in before I move in Drogo, but you can leave your tank a little longer if you wish. Um, I think in this time a few spiders have moved in, typically that's what they do. Um, but finally, I can now move in Drogo. So it is the evening time, but I've just quickly put on the light so I can show you Drogo moving in. If you know anything about Chihuahuas, you know they go really slow and then suddenly go really fast. So it won't surprise me if he scarpers off. But already, like, if you were, like, back here, I guess you didn't... Okay, that's kind of obvious, but they do blend in really well. And I think this bit of bark here, the inside of this, he's going to blend in so well. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. I have added Drogo's food bowl onto the door because it was too wide for the mesh bits and the background's too thick for the magnets to work, so... I've just put it here, hopefully it gets on well with it. It does have two holes because I like to put the food in here and I'll put some water in here like in a separate dish. Um, even though obviously you still miss them down and they tend to drink droplets, um, I have found that Drogo and Lyra will still drink from standing water when it's hot in summer like it is right now. I just think it's good to leave some out for them. But um, I've just moved him on top of here so you can see a little bit more. Um, and I'm sure he'll settle in, but I'm going to leave him. I'm going to turn off the lights so he can really settle in and get used to this new environment. But I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you and goodbye.